Have you ever met someone, perhaps a friend or relative, who always seems sad or tired most of the time? Maybe they're stressed or maybe they're just not in the mood. But what if they have depression? To keep it short, depression is a common medical illness that often affects the way you think and how you feel. Depression affects more than 264 million people worldwide, and it has the potential to negatively impact an individual's quality of life because of how debilitating it can be. Undetected and untreated depression is a serious concern because every year, about 8,000 individuals die from suicide related to depression. So what exactly are the symptoms of depression? A depressed individual tends to feel depressed, fatigued, unmotivated to eat or have a lower sex drive. They also tend to sleep too little or too much. They may feel worthless and sometimes may experience suicidal thoughts as well. In terms of diagnosis, people tend to get professional help from either a doctor or a mental health specialist. When these health practitioners are diagnosing depression, they normally use the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale, which is essentially a self-reported survey with questionnaires to rate the individual's mood and behaviors for the last couple of weeks. There have been several studies regarding depression because of how common it is around the world. One study has shown that outpatients from otolaryngology have the highest prevalence of depression, while dermatology ranked the second highest. Another study estimated a one-year prevalence for depression from a data of 1 million participants from 30 countries. You're probably wondering if there's a way to combat depression. And the answer to that is yes, there are ways to tackle depression. Many healthcare professionals suggest that exercising, sleeping adequately, or even weekly counseling are options to manage depression. Some may even recommend the use of antidepressants such as fluoxetine. Fluoxetine is an example of an antidepressant under the SSRI class. It is usually distributed under the product name Prozac in the United States and Canada. It has the ability to inhibit the reuptake of serotonin in the brain. Fluoxetine, like many other drugs, has side effects. Often, an individual experiences headache, sexual dysfunction, and nausea. However, there are other rare side effects such as drowsiness, weight loss, diarrhea, tremors, and photosensitivity. Most of the time, an individual who is described fluoxetine will take about 20 mg as their daily intake. Other studies have shown that a safe range to administer this drug is around 20 to 40 mg without any adverse effects. In the previous section, you're probably wondering what an SSRI is. Well, to keep it simple, SSRI stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. It is essentially a new class of antidepressants since it provides less adverse effects than tricyclic antidepressants. Now, what exactly are tricyclic antidepressants, or TCAs? TCAs are a class of antidepressants found before SSRIs. The only difference is that the latter selectively inhibits the reuptake of one chemical messenger, which is serotonin, while TCAs inhibit the reuptake of many chemical messengers, like serotonin, dopamine, epinephrine, and so on. SSRIs are more preferred since its selective inhibition ability gives lesser side effects than TCAs, since they pretty much inhibit almost all of the chemical messengers in the brain. With that being said, how does an antidepressant work? Well, to start off, your brain has these components which are called the neurotransmitters, the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron. Here, there are neurotransmitters floating inside the presynaptic neuron. These are the chemical messengers that are responsible for your psychological functions, such as your fear, mood, and pleasure. They transmit messages between these two neurons, and so they are always released into the synaptic cleft. Next, they'll be captured by the receptors so that they can send the signal towards your body. However, they also bind with the specific transporter protein to be brought back into the presynaptic neuron. The way antidepressants work is that they will essentially block these transporter proteins from bringing the neurotransmitters back in the presynaptic cleft. Since the reuptake action is blocked, this will allow for more neurotransmitters to float around in the synaptic cleft and increase the chance of the message being delivered in the postsynaptic neuron, since the receptors will receive more neurotransmitters. With that being said, should people take antidepressants? Yes, if you and your doctor agree that it's suited for you, and here's the reasons why. Perhaps there is still fear and stigma among us when it comes to using antidepressants as a way to treat depression. However, many scientific studies have shown that antidepressants like fluoxetine are safe to use. They have stated that fluoxetine and other SSRI antidepressants are effective in treating depression and have less side effects compared to TCAs. 
Even though depression is a serious and debilitating mental disorder that can affect an individual's quality of life, it can be treated, whether it be with antidepressants like fluoxetine or other forms of treatment. If you or someone you know is struggling with depression, please remember that you are not alone. Please talk to someone you trust, such as a friend, doctor, family member, or counselor, and also try to reach out to the following resources that we have provided in the video description below. Thank you for watching. Check out more content and information at the Demystifying Medicine website that we have provided down below.